Welcome to the video on trading and exchanging. During the course of a chess game, you are often going to be faced with many decisions with regards to pieces or pawns that you can capture. This video is going to help you form the base of your decision making for how to determine whether or not taking a certain piece or pawn is a good decision or not. Okay, so the words trade and exchange are often interchangeable, but there is a small difference which we will cover. The word trade implies two pieces taking each other of equal value, okay, and both you and your opponent having an equal result from those captures. Okay, now it's important for a quick refresher to really remember the point value associated with each piece. This is important that you remember this because that helps you directly in your decision-making process, right? If you know that one piece is more valuable than another, you likely will be aware of when a situation arises when one is attacking the other, who would get a better end result if those pieces were to take each other, okay? So as a refresher, the pawn is worth one point, the knight and bishop are worth three, the rook is worth five, the queen is worth nine, and the king, of course, is priceless because it can never be captured during a game. All right. So let's look at a couple examples. All right. So when we say the word trade, okay, all this really means is pretend it's this position. Okay, so in this situation, black has the option to take white's pawn on d4. And now white can recapture. So this is called an even trade, right? Because black took one of white's pawns, but white took one of black's pawns. So that's a net zero return right? Each side got the equal amount of value out of that trade, okay? And the point values can be used to assess situations. For example, if you have the option of getting a bishop for, let's say, three pawns, for example, just because it's a different currency, if you will, it could be an equivalent trade, right? Because three pawns could equal the value of that bishop. Or a bishop and knight together, equaling that of a rook and pawn, or a rook, bishop, and pawn, equaling that of a queen, right? Just some basic addition, uh, 5 plus 3 plus 1 equals 9, for example. Okay, so here, just to continue along to make sure it's crystal clear, let's pretend that black plays queen to f6. White now has the option. Since black offered a trade of queens, meaning two queens are going to take each other, right? So queen takes queen, and now knight takes queen. This was an even result, right? Because both players took each other's queen. However, there are examples of what's called an advantageous exchange. So exchange means that two pieces take each other, but it does not necessarily mean that the trade, or the exchange for that matter, was equal. Trade implies equality. Exchange can be both the act of trading or trading for an advantage, advantageous exchange, meaning that one side wins material or obtains a material advantage after an exchange. Okay, so on a very basic level, this is how we can evaluate something like this. Let's take a very, very simplified position. Okay, for example, here. All right, in this position, what you should do as an exercise is try to identify the advantageous exchange and at the same time identify who is getting the better deal as a result of that exchange, okay, and how many points that exchange is worth as far as like a net positive or negative, okay. So in this case, uh, white to move because he's in check. Of course, the pawn can take the queen on b4. Okay, 
So is that a good or a bad decision? Well, it's a good decision because the pawn worth one point is worth a lot less than the most powerful piece in the game, the queen, worth nine points. So as a result, that is a net positive of an eight-point gain for white. All right, obviously a very simplistic example with no more pieces on the board, but you get my point. Okay, so another example like this, for instance, white to play again. Identifying the capture, in this situation, the rook can take the queen. Then, of course, black can recapture that way. All right, that would be a net gain of four points for white, right? Because white captured a queen worth nine points, but in so doing, he lost his rook worth five points. Nine minus five is four, but it's still a good outcome and a good exchange for white. The most common advantageous exchange you will find in chess is when one of your minor pieces, the knight or the bishop, takes a rook. Okay, so this actually can be shorthand or slang, if you will, in chess, as called winning or losing the exchange. If we say that phrase, that literally means a knight or a bishop was exchanged for a rook. Okay, so it's, it's kind of like even a proper noun, if you will. Okay, so in this situation, the knight can capture the rook on f6, which will be taken by the rook. All right, so it's a net gain of two points for white. Similar situation here. Identify the capture. Is it a good exchange or a bad exchange? Once again, white wins the exchange by taking the rook on h5, loses the bishop in the process, Still a net gain of two points. All right. You're going to have situations like this, where one of your pieces is attacking multiple of your opponent's pieces, and you have to make a decision on which one to take and which one to capture. The easiest way to lean towards making a final decision is to just identify which one is worth more. Right? So in this position, again, very simplistic. But if you have the option, as white, to either take the rook on f4 or the queen on c5, which one you, would you do and why? Well, same thing here. You know the queen is, more, is the most powerful piece. It is worth 9 points compared to the rook, which is worth 5. So the decision is pretty clear that taking the queen is the best move. Okay. Let's actually go through an actual game scenario, all right, just to kind of see how this can play out in your every move decision making process. Okay, so let's take this position, for instance. All right, you may notice that, hey, as white, I can take this pawn on e5. Okay, so my question to you is is that a good or a bad decision? The answer is that is a bad decision, okay? Why? You may have noticed that if the knight takes the pawn on e5, black can take back with his knight, okay? So this was not a trade, all right? A trade would be a knight for a knight or a pawn for a pawn. But in this case, white got one of black's pawns, and in return, black got one of white's knights. So who came out ahead out of that exchange? The answer is black, right? In the form of the equivalent of two pawns in this case, two points, right? Because white's knight was worth three points, whereas black's pawn was only worth one, three minus one is two. Okay, so you get the hang of it. It's very, very simple. Same thing here. You know, black is attacking white's bishop on c4. Should white move or defend this piece, or should white capture this pawn on f7? Well, similar thing. This is not a one-to-one -one exchange. While you have captured the pawn on f7, you are going to lose the bishop, and this is another two-point gain for black because of it. Okay, so for some examples, let me ask you this question. It's black's move here, and 
Black took on e4 with his pawn, and White recaptured. All right. So was that a trade or an advantageous exchange? The answer is that was a trade, right? Because it is two pieces of equal value capturing each other. Same thing here. Let's pretend black takes the bishop on b3 and white recaptures. Was this a trade or an exchange? Well, same thing. It's a trade because both bishops are of equal value. Same thing here. This is a queen trade. However, in this situation, after all of those exchanges, black actually comes out one pawn ahead because at the end of the sequence, he is able to take this pawn on f2 and nothing can recapture this bishop on f2. Okay, so that is a very basic introductory video on trades and exchanges. This will help you a lot on making basic decisions on whether or not taking a piece or a pawn is a good idea. All you have to do is think about the value of the piece or pawn capturing, whatever it is, along with if your opponent can recapture in some sort. It's just very, very simple math. Thank you for watching, and feel free to practice the examples associated with this video. Thank you.